Hello everybody. In this screencast, we're gonna do this assignment, which focuses on uh, SQL using SQL Lite, the Room database, right? So basically, we're going to use the Room library, the Android Room library, to uh, to manage the grades. So basically, you have the GPA uh, stuff here. You have uh, basically we're gonna store these this course information. So when you add a new course, we add it to the database. And then here we are going to read it from the database so basically you have the read data from the database you have the delete and we have add or insert all right cool so let's start by integrating into the starter uh, the starter project integrate the rooms database so here's the save data to the local database using room i'll copy this there are two libraries there is the room library runtime and then there is the annotation processor so what I'm going to do is copy the implementation stuff here. Go to the build gradle. Add the stuff here. <coughs> Control V. There it is. And then the versions, I can just uh, copy the version from here. And I'm going to put it here. This is the first version and version. So now let's build or sync now. And it's going to bring in the data from the cloud and the library is integrated so basically first we need an entity so let's work on that but let's wait until the build is done okay the app is currently compiled against 32 it's recommended to update it to the newer version okay cool we'll update it to the newer version so this is 33 and 33 and let's build again okay <coughs> and i will sync now once it's completed here okay we're good and then sync up the app okay so it's building okay perfect so it's it's building things seem to be working we're good and we'll run it again and here we are okay cool so now let's go set up the entity so we are in java we need a user class in, in our case we will have a grade class so let's have a look it's a grade class which is provided to us i'm gonna remove this uh, actually these getters and setters are used because i have a, all the ui and all the recycler view data already implemented or the code is implemented so basically i need to uh, indicate that this is an entity so i'll go here and annotation so i'm going to go here i'm going to do ntt so th this is to indicate that it's an entity here it is and then what's the primary key let's add the primary key so let's do a public uh i think it's a long so the primary key is an integer okay we'll call it for example an, an integer we'll call it for example course id right and this is going to be the primary key and uh primary key all right here it is now well, let's go back to i'll close the emulator just so that i could see the screen here so here is the database let's make this a little bit here here we are so i'm done with the entity now if you if you don't indicate uh, the column information it's fine it will automatically create a column for each one of them for each one of these there will be a column all right so basically the course hours the letter grade of the course the course name and the course number all right so that's taken care of that's the entity class this is to describe a table right so this is going to be a table right now we need to create a da object data access object so basically we go here right click new uh, java class i'll call it for example the grade d a o right it is and then basically here it's an interface so basically this is an interface not a class so let me delete this all right so let's delete okay right click new and what we want to do is a java class and i'm going to pick interface i'll call it for example a uh, grade d a o and here it is and we just have to indicate that it's a dao dao here it is okay and then inside it we need to implement uh, to indicate what methods you would like to have so looking back at this what methods i want to have i want to get all right so i'm gonna do the get all right get all of them so basically get all that's what i'm going to do here it is 
and then basically add so basically i'm going to send you so basically insert you know or insert all we can do insert or or insert okay and then similarly the delete so i want the delete so you give me a grade i'll delete it all right cool so let's go back here <coughs> and what i'm going to do is get all so i'll we'll do uh, list of grade get all right here it is and then import this class and here you provide the query the query is going to be select 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 all from grid all right cool so now how do you know the name of the grid so what we could do is in the grid object here the entity you can give it a name you see here entity table name so basically the default is so i could go entity here table name and i can specify the table name i want it to be great or it's going to be great okay so now when i go here when i say great it knows what i'm talking about right okay so that's get all and then the delete is uh, void delete and i'm going to provide a grade <coughs> grade here it is and that becomes the delete so here it is delete so i have the delete function here and then the insert so basically uh, void insert all and basically you're going to provide grade dot 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 grade all right and that's the insert all <coughs> and here it is insert all right so here it is i have the deo already implemented here not implemented in this is you describe the deo see here the library is going to implement it automatically right here it is scrolling down a little bit database so we have the database so basically we need to create a class we call it the app database for example we'll copy that i'll go here right click new java class database app database here it is and it needs to be an abstract class an abstract class it needs to extend the room database here it is and then we have to indicate that it's a database database and then the entities that you want to include are going to be the uh, the grid dot class then comma then the version let's make it one for the time being the version is what you do what you use to indicate that the database has changed right if you update it so public abstract um, grade dao and we call it the grade dao all right cool so we have access to that so i just implemented it exactly to match what is here right okay so we're good here now when are we needing this when do we need to get access to the data so if you look back here we need it in this screen this screen is in which fragment it's in the grades fragment here it is and in the grade fragment uh, we need to get the grades so basically what i'm going to do is here i'm going to get the grades get the grades all right so now i need the database first to start off right so basically i need this kind of code right and <coughs> i'm gonna put a comment here so i need the database so let's me copy this from here i'll put this let's say here so this is the db right and then when we're coming in i'm going to do db okay db db equals room dot database builder you get it the context get activity that's the context and then you give it the, the app database class and then the database name let's call it for example grades db all right dot build to build it so that's the database right now when you are building it also it's a good idea to indicate for example uh fall by migration is destructive and then allow uh, running on main thread cool so that's just setting up the db right and then basically here we could just say um we have a list here there is a list of grades that's being used by the adapter so what i could do is i could say grades dot clear m grades dot add all db dot get get we want the dao right dot get you see here get all is already implemented so basically this is the dao that we declare that we described here and then there is a method that we described called get all get all and here is get all 
so basically when we do this when then we need to notify the adapter notify data has changed and then basically calculate the gpa all right so now let's, let's run this and see but of course i don't have any courses in my database right so that's one right now when you click on add i want to add a course so let's add a course that's we could do this so now let's go to add course fragment here is we'll copy some code so basically i'll copy this code here and here we are i'll copy this code here the database is here okay here is the database right now we need to create a course and then store it so how do we do that i have the number the name the hours okay cool so now what we're going to do is we're going to i'm storing the grade as a letter so you see here if you look at the grade everything is a string except the hours you go back here the hours is a double you see here but then everything the course number the course name and the course letter grade everything is a string good so now if we look at the grid here there should be a constructor an empty constructor let's create another constructor a constructor based on just these fields the hours the grade the name and the course number that's our constructor here right so now what i'm going to do is uh, after everything is said and done i create a course or a grade grade equal new grade and i'm going to pass it the number of hours which is hours is the course hours then this is the letter grade right course letter grade course name course number all right so and now i have the course right so i have a grade a grade and then db dot do dot insert all and i'm passing the grade all right and then m listener dot done adding the course here it is so when we run you we should be able to see be able to add a course so let's go here scroll down a little bit so I click on add let's say for example here course number is itis 4180 course name is mobile app development course hours is three let's say it's an a and submit and you see here when we add it it gets added in the database when you go back to the grades fragment we we this call get this method gets called again and it does the math right for us cool so now let's do the delete the delete is very straightforward so now if we scroll up a little bit this is where the delete is and you see here that this is the view holder for the recycler view and we already get a copy of the grade that we're displaying all we need to do is db dot get the o dot uh uh, delete and we get the grade m grade right so basically we also need to notify the adapter that it has changed and actually we need to reload the whole thing so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a method here i'll call for example load and display data right so basically that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to cut this from here and paste it here and that's what i'm going to call load and display data right and basically what i'm going to do is load and display data when it's being called i'm going to call it here again delete and then load and display data so when we run this we will be able to delete so let's see so here we are i click on the delete and it gets deleted and life is good so let's go add a course let's this is just an experiment here b and let me add some course just let, let's make it itis 4180 and mobile app development and submit and here it is add another one let's say itis 3200 intro to info security course hours is three and let's do this as an a and submit it crashes so let's see why did it crash unique constraint fee uh, failed all right why did the unique constraint failed because if you look at the grid we created a primary key but we need to tell it that it's auto increment equal to true to auto generate the primary key right to auto generate the the number so basically this is auto increment we're telling it that next time implement it okay so now if this is the case and we change see here we did change the database so what we need to do is in the app database we need to bump up the number to two 
and run it again you'll see now what's going to happen is that it didn't complain you know it deleted the database because we indicated when we created the database that we wanted to use destruction right so basically here you see here we said that fall back to destructive migration so meaning that whenever you change the version of the database it will destroy the database that is there right you can create whatever migration you want that that maybe copy the data update the data so you go back here course number itis 4180 uh, mobile app development three hours let's do this as an a click on submit here is the first one and another course let's see itis 3200 intro to infosec also three hours let's do a b here and i click on submit and here we are now am i able to delete yes i'm able to delete and i'm able to add so this solves this is very straightforward it's a very nice library to use and it's very easy to use please let me know if you have any questions thank you